my loyal subjects, and today we're going to be talking about this little technique I used here, specifically these bits. These really ornate little spinny things. These are something that really stumped me for quite a while on how to efficiently create them and get this, like, intricate look. Uh, this has taken about five minutes to throw together, and that was five minutes of me talking and then realizing that I had spent too long after I'd actually explained how to do this just fucking around and modeling. Because you know what? It's really fun to play with this. Um, so, and hopefully this should introduce you into the idea of proportional editing and how you can actually use proportional editing in some cool ways. And if you don't know what I mean by proportional editing, you're in for a treat. Because we're about to have a lot of fun playing with little simple shapes like this that let us wrap something around itself. Start off at a plane. Let's scale it down a bit. I'm just going to disable proportional editing for now. Um, so anyway, this is what you should pretty much see when you first start. Um, I've got a little matte cap on and some stuff. I'm just going to um, kind of clear this out. So clean it all up. But, uh, yeah, so we've got this little narrow, thin plane right here. Uh, let's go hit Control r to add some edge loops. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel to just add a bunch of segments. And uh, so now we've got this detailed plane, and I want to kind of illustrate what the concept behind this whole proportional editing trick is. So what it is, is that normally when you rotate some vertices, you only rotate the ones you've got selected. Those of you familiar with proportional editing have probably already guessed what the trick is. If you enable proportional editing, you can move, and it will basically, whatever effect, whatever change you're putting on these vertices will also be propagated to all nearby vertices, but does so sort of in a fall off. Um, so it's like bending nearby vertices more, the closer they are to what you have selected. This is really useful for editing proportions, but it's also very useful for creating some cool shapes. So you can see here I've created a very weird shape curve thing. Uh, but if I just go into my side view and rotate this around on itself, we've created a cool shape. Now in this case I have back face culling off, or on rather, so uh, I can't see the back faces of things. It's good for optimization, it also tells you where your lighting is going to glitch. So I'm just going to add a solidify modifier, this will actually make it solid. Uh, I'm not really going to be talking too much about this, you can play around with it, it's basically just a little... It'll basically extrude a surface. That's basically all it's doing. But uh, yeah, proportional editing. It's amazing. Uh, let's talk about some cool techniques. First of all, 3D cursor. Really, really useful. So what you do is you hit the period key. This is the one between M and Shift, not the one on your number pad. This will make your pivot point your 3D cursor. You can also do it down here if you go under your 3D cursor settings, wherever that is, uh, under your pivot point, um, you can actually change it from median, which is control comma, um, active element, which I don't know what that is, and 3D cursor. 3D cursor and median point are probably the ones I use most, uh, which are period and control comma. They're next to each other. They're nice. Control comma. Now I'm dragging around the center, I'm rotating around the center, etc. Hit the period key. I'm rotating around my 3D cursor, and this is really useful for folding metal around on itself. So you can see here. I've created a really cool little shape here. And, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, I recommend playing around with different falloff shapes as well. So, for example, you can go under uh, next to proportional editing, this little button down here. You can make it, like, sharp, in which case I can drag it, and it gives me this kind of sharper angle. I'm also going to make sure this is even thickness. So you can see we can create some really neat uh, organic shapes. And I'm also going to subdivide it before we actually solidify it. Just that way we've got something reasonably smooth looking. And, uh... But yeah, this is a thing. This is a thing we can use very readily. Now, final thing I want to talk about is connected. So normal proportional editing, as you can see, has a bit of a problem. It goes based on how pr uh, close vertices are. It does not care if they are connected. However, they have a special mode for this. If you go into proportional editing, there's uh, connected, which you can either activate by hitting the control O key, um, or not control, sorry, alt O, which the way you activate proportional editing is by hitting the O key. Alt O will activate and deactivate um, 
connected proportional editing. Now what does connected do? Well, it does exactly what you would kind of expect it to if you were pulling on a piece of metal or something like that. You can basically just propagate the change. If you increase your radius by scrolling your scroll wheel and you uh, decrease it, you'll adjust basically how long up the chain uh, or up your mesh it extends. This is really, really useful, especially when dealing with scale operations. So, for example, this. There, I now have this cool weird shape thing that I can play with. Anyway, so with that in mind, let's go in and actually apply this in a practical setting. And let's talk about one final little trick that I absolutely love. Add a lot of subdivisions along your thin plane. And uh, add a lot of subdivisions to this. And let's actually use proportional editing on this first. So I'm going to select a couple uh, lines. I'm going to activate proportional editing, and I'm going to hit Alt-S to slide along its normal, basically what direction it's facing. And I reduce my radius somewhat so I can actually get something reasonably useful. And I'll grab one in the center and drag it down a bit as well so we get something nice and shapely. And uh, so you can see we've got kind of a cool shape, right? Maybe we want to scale it down a bit. Maybe scale it up a bit. Again, once you've got your cool strip of metal, let's start bending it. Let's add a bunch of subdivisions along. And uh, yeah, let's start playing. So let's drop our 3D cursor somewhere just by left clicking or if you've got it bound to some other key. So we can either start just by directly spinning this or we can hit the period key and start bending it around our 3D cursor, which can be really, really useful. And uh, in this case, I want to kind of fold it over on itself, so I'm going to start using connected because these are very close. So let's just bend that over on itself. And you can see we're already getting something really nice and organic and gives us kind of a cool look, all things considered. And uh, so yeah, let's go up here. And a lot of it's just kind of experimentation, uh, figuring out what works, what doesn't. And uh, yeah, so let's solidify this. And then let's split the sharp edges. Let's scale it out a bit. Um, in this case, control comma, because I want it to scale from the center of my selection. But I'm using connected, so it'll propagate that change along my object. I'm just gonna scale it out so the difference is more noticeable. And then I'll scale it back in so that it sort of becomes a little bit thinner. And you can see we get a really cool, ornate little piece here that we can then use in a more complex model. For example, I can take it out here, and let's uh, array it in a circle. This is a really cool way of using it. So let's add a plane axis. Um, this will be something we array around. And I'm just going to hit array using an object, in this case an empty. And you can see we now have a nice little array around this. I don't understand why it's arraying in the way that it is, but it is, so whatever. Oh, because we still have relative offsets. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, anyway. But you can see here, we get some cool stuff. Let's play around with this. Meet these up, and you can see we're starting to get that shape that I had at the beginning. Um, so this is really nice and all, but let's actually create something a little bit more interesting. Um, a eh, ceiling chandelier, maybe. Uh, we could add like a little light in the center of this. So you can imagine like a little light here. And uh, I'm going to clear my grease pencil real quick. But you can imagine like a little light in there. You can imagine all kinds of cool stuff. Let's uh, duplicate this. And I'm just going to play around with this a little bit, so. Try to get something that looks kind of like a ceiling ornament. And uh, yeah, there. Maybe I'll go in and I'll select the uh, top line of this. Let's just select that. Using traditional proportional editing, I'm just going to 
Actually, now we'll use connected because I only want it to scale up things it's connected to. And then we'll make that a little bit larger so it's a little more accented. But uh, yeah, you can see here, I've created a cool chandelier in a matter of seconds. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helped you out somewhat. It's a little technique that I personally love using. So if you see, uh, honestly, if you want to do some art pieces, this is a really cool little technique to use for generating little, little ornate pieces, just little ornate bits of art. And this is one of those things that's really hard to model, but using proportional editing, it becomes really, really easy. And play around with it, like make some cool stuff out of it and uh, be creative. Remember, you can always play with this stuff, come up with your own uses, try to think about what you yourself can apply this to. I see so many people who, uh, I was recently having a conversation with 3D Bandit, great channel, go check it out, um, about the idea of people uh, who actually, you know, just watch a tutorial and copy it directly, which is really good for a learning experience, but one of the most important things as an artist, of course, is coming up with your own stuff and not necessarily just using the tutorial, because especially when you're showing your own show reel and you're trying to actually get a job, it's important to show your own work and the kind of stuff you've come up with because people want to hire your creativity, not just someone who can follow a tutorial. So while tutorials are super good learning resources, it's always important to actually pick up and you know play with your own techniques. Also just for artistic health, honestly. It's just good to be able to come up with your own techniques, explore, find cool techniques, and research. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully this has informed you. Hopefully you'll be able to create some cool assets. And uh, yeah, check it out. Make some cool stuff. Link me video. Uh, link me. Uh, throw a link to whatever you've made. Throw a screenshot, something like that. Uh, I want to see what kind of cool stuff people make. So anyway, peace out. Good luck. Blender things. Cool little for talking.